All right, Finn. Hello. And, um, you know, let's start right away with SummerSlam. What are your thoughts on what you witness in Vegas? Um, well, I didn't witness it because I wasn't there and I didn't watch it on TV, but I got the, the update the next day. And um, obviously it's bittersweet because then um, I would have loved to have been a part of SummerSlam. I uh, feel like I had earned that right. That right was taken away from me by John Cena. So to get to see him get smashed by Roman Reigns was uh, was um, something that you know made me smile. Uh, the fact that Brock is back is something that made me smile because you know for me he's one of the best in the business that's ever done it. Uh, someone who I had one of my favorite matches of my career and someone who I would love to step in the ring with again. You know, Roman's still the champion. That's the title that I want. Uh, so, you know, I want to challenge Roman also. So uh, there's a lot of positives to take out of uh, the fact that I wasn't involved uh, because, you know, we've a lot, a lot of business left to handle. Yeah, but your eyes still on Roman Reigns and the title as soon as possible? Absolutely. Um, you know, that's the reason why I'm back on SmackDown is, is for the Universal Championship. And, uh, you know, whether it was going to be John Cena or Roman Reigns as champion, uh, that's that's the match that I want, the Universal Championship. And, uh, you know, many people are wondering, where's the demon? Um, do you think the demon might come back one of these days? Mm, I feel like the demon will surface eventually, but right now uh, I'm very comfortable in this incarnation of my character as a prince. And I feel like, um, you know, I'm really making the most out of my abilities of, uh, about being economical with my movements in the ring and uh, you know I feel like there will be a point where we need the demon but right now it's, uh, it's not something that I'm looking at. Uh, you know there was supposed to be a takeover in Dublin and the pandemic again you know ended up cancelling that. That would be a match that you would like to have in you know in your hometown in your home country with Walter like a takeover let's say takeover Dublin when happens maybe next year would be that a match that you would push to have? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's a couple of matches that I'm, you know, wanting to have uh, at, at certain points in my career, and I feel like uh, the match with Walter is something that you know I really want to get to sooner rather than later. <laughs> and uh, you know, to do to do that in Dublin at a takeover would, would be incredible. And I remember I wrestled an NXT show in Dublin against Samoa Joe, and uh, it was at the O2 Arena or the Three Arena, and I remember they only had half of the arena opened uh, because, you know, it was NXT and they weren't expected to sell as many tickets as they would with, you know, a Raw or SmackDown branded show. And uh, half that arena made more noise than, you know, any full arena I've been in the United States. And uh, it, was, uh, it was an incredible night. So to get to go back and do a takeover in Dublin would, you know, be a dream come true for me. You know, let's talk about football because I see Juventus there. I know you're a Tottenham Hotspur fan. Um, why Spurs? So, at the time, obviously my older brother was a Tottenham fan. He's two years older than me. But at the time, it was Paul Gascoigne and Gary Lineker were the, the star players for Tottenham. And it was a, a really exciting team to watch. And, and you know, we, you know at, at that age, you know, in the the late 80s, early 90s, you know, being like, you know, 10, 10 years old, it, you know, I was just captivated by, by Paul Gascoigne, Lineker, Naeem, uh, even like the center backs, Gary Mabbitt, Paul Stewart, all these guys were like, for me, just larger than life. And, you know, I kind of maybe saw the same thing in the Tottenham team that I saw in pro wrestling. And, you know, I was just drawn to them. And, uh, you know, maybe... You know, it's been a long 30 years of supporting Tottenham Hotspur with heartache after heartache after heartache. Um, but uh, it's, you know, you, you, can't, you can't change your colours and you can't change your stripes. And uh, through uh, sickness and health, I will be a, uh, I will be a Tottenham fan. <laughs> <laughs> Did you suffer much on that final? Yeah, um, I went to the final. I sat in the stands and it was heartbreaking, but... I really tried to look at the bright side of it because to be in a Champions League final as a Tottenham fan was something that I never imagined. And just to have that experience, you know, with my brother there in Madrid and, you know, 
just lapping up the atmosphere, really enjoying the party and, you know, having to, you know, live that experience, win, lose or draw was something that, you know, can't take away like that, yeah. mom that moment in time. And, uh, you know, the, the joy of the Lucas Mora hat trick and that moment that, you know, put us into the final is something that, you know, I'll, I'll remember forever. And just the excitement of the months leading up to it, knowing we're going to the Champions League final was really enough of a, uh, of a reward for being, yeah. you know, a 30 year fan. Uh, that's something that I thought I would never experience. So, and, um, you know, I'm grateful for the experience. I'm grateful for the journey. Obviously the result wasn't, what it was supposed to be but you know, that's life and it's, again it's a game of football it's not life or death so um, it was a good time obviously uh, I can't stand Liverpool I can't stand Liverpool and <laughs> uh, you know Shane don't say is, that don't say that to me either <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, you know, some of my best friends are, are Liverpool fans you know one of my oldest wrestling friends Paul Tracy uh, you know, Jordan Devlin, obviously, Seamus, and uh, these guys, the way they gloat and, like, just rub their victories in people's faces makes me sick. <laughs> but they'll get it. They'll get it. <laughs> Karma is a B, as they say. Yeah. <laughs> you know, no, just to wrap it up, you know, we're running out of time. And, uh, you know, you guys had two Portuguese managers. Obviously, at Mourinho, now you have Nuno Espirito Santo there as manager. Nuno has a different style. It seems to be a more, you know, cautious playing, more a counter-attack. Mourinho was a bit more that, but there was a bit more football. But, you know, for, for some reason, things didn't, didn't work with Mourinho. Do you think with uh, Nuno, things might improve? You know, you guys beat City, you know, on, on the opening game, so. Yeah, I, I think already there's been a huge improvement on the main improvement for me is the focus has gone off the manager and onto the players. And I feel like with Mourinho, you know, the focus was all around him. Uh, it was really the Mourinho show. It wasn't necessarily about what was going on on the pitch. It was what he was going to say before or after the game. And, uh, you know, the results didn't really matter. I feel with Nuno, he, you know, he puts the emphasis on the team. You know, he doesn't seem to like the limelight or the attention. And uh, I, I think it's something that, you know, the players are really going to benefit from. And uh, just, you know, watching the first two games of the season, uh, you know, they performed very well. So hopefully, hopefully that can continue.